ago, but everyone calls me Anna. Um, again, with the whole Antoinette thing. Uh, and this is all about cosplay. It's kind of a, uh, you know, it's kind of like an every cosplay panel. I've, I've run, you know, Cosplay 101, I've run, you know, advanced cosplay, I've run special techniques. And I find that, you know, people come to the panels with all different degrees of, of skill when it comes to cosplay. And so I kind of want to do this more as a, a Q&A, show off some things, and talk about some like tricks, and really answer any questions you guys have. Um, I've been doing the whole cosplay thing since 1999, uh, and I was an adult then, so I'm really old and I'm doing this a really, really long time, um, and I don't think I'll ever give up. I hope one day to do an accurate old lady Sophie costume from the Moving Castle. Uh, and yeah, um, I actually uh, learned to sew initially from my mom. I went home um, during my winter break and my first year of college, and I was like, hey mom, can you help me make these costumes? Because she's a really good seamstress, and it was Dagger from Final Fantasy IX, and um, excuse me, St. Tail from Magical Girl St. Tail. And she looks at me and she says, honey, you know Halloween was like four months ago. <laughs> and I was like, well, so I'm going to this thing. It's called a convention. And after I explained it to her, she's like, okay, I don't really, I don't really get it, but I'll help you. And uh, with her help, I made my first two costumes and uh, was pretty much set in stone. Uh, and then I, I actually ended up going to fashion school for two years. I went to the International Academy of Design and Technology and I majored in fashion design and marketing and I learned a lot of amazing skill sets and then promptly never made a career in costuming or fashion. I went back to working in TV news. Uh, hey, whatever, it pays well and then I get to still do my silly hobby. So that's my background. Um, I'm not... I'm not so much of, a, a, I don't really compete a lot. Um, a lot of people will ask me questions about masquerades, and while I've judged and emceed many, many, many masquerades over the years, I've actually only competed in three, um, and I've never won anything, and that's okay. I actually recently competed in the World Cosplay Summit up at KetsuCon, and it was a great experience, and I'm so happy that Katie and Diana won because they're so awesome. If uh, you really want to see a great skit performance, I recommend going to a website called American Cosplay Paradise. Uh, if you're a cosplayer, you should actually get an account there. You can sign up and post photos. But they also have all the videos of the performing or performers from World Cosplay Summit. And um, the girls that won this year, Katie and Diana, did a fantastic Princess Tutu skit. So if you want to see good stage shows, I, I suggest watching that one. Um, so yeah, so that's a bit about my background. Um, looks like we've got a lot of non-cosplayers in my panel. Which is uh, which is rare. So I kind of want to get a get a feel from some of you guys, like why you're here, what you hope to learn, and and I can tailor it through that. So um, anyone want to speak up? Uh, raise your hand. Tell me why you're here, or I'll start pointing at people. Mm -hmm. You. I'm just looking at learning some new skill sets to help me with designing my OCs. Awesome. I really I'm a big fan. Original character, do not steal. It's a big thing. It's a joke we had at Casting Con. Um, I'll be in. I'll be an original character tonight. All right. Uh, you in the back with. Long. It looks like you're with your daughter. No, yeah, you just turned your head. Me. You, yeah. <laughs> Steampunk. I've done that. I actually uh, worked with Outland Armor when they were still around, and we did the uh, Steampunk Star Wars group, and I have several original st Steampunk characters, so I can pull some of that. We'll just talk about that. Uh, we're looking to start uh, Steampunk characters as well, and we're just trying to find where to start. Awesome. So all about Steampunk with Anna said it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about character design um, so we can talk about creating or if you want to you know do something that's based from the 2d and translating it to 3d um, I uh, like I said I do everything from anime comic books original stuff um, video games you know I've, I've run the gamut uh, eventually I'll find my my folder is that, what is, is that like my docu no, not control panel that should get me where I want to go nope <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm you would think I would know how to use my own laptop it's, uh, I've only had this there's the second little icon next to the star thing, I think. Oh, yeah, the no. next one over. Next oh, there it is. Thank you. I'm like, it's eating up my laptop. Um, <laughs> there we go. C drive. Yay. Costumes. So in my computer, I have a folder of all the costumes I want to do. Um, and I, one of the things that I highly recommend, whether you're doing 
um, a, like a, a well-known character or your own original character, get reference images. Find as many reference images as you possibly can, especially in the in the realm of an original character. Steampunk, it's always good to have, you know, ideas, like things to, you know, inspiration, an inspiration folder. Um, I use sites like Flickr, DeviantArt. Um, Tumblr is also really good. People post so many images on Tumblr that you can just search things, you know, everything from, like, um, metallic corset, uh, because I want to, one of the characters I want to do is an uh, automaton, a, uh, a steampunk robot girl, and I want to, I have like metallic leather that I'm going to build a corset and build like a faux, like working inside that you can open it up and, and see it. And, and I've seen art and I've seen other people do this, so I love to get images just so I can have those ideas in hand, um, especially when, when you are looking to do um, like, like established characters. Sometimes it's really hard, like in, the, in my case for, I did Queen Esther from Trinity Blood, that's what I actually competed in for WCS. There is only one piece of art of my character, wow. and that's it. So some people could look at that and be like, oh, I don't know what to do. I look at that as, oh, look at all the things I can do because it's not established. We don't know what the whole lower quarter of her uh, dress looks like. We don't know what her back looks like. So I was able to just go crazy uh, in interpreting my costume. I'll show some images of that in a bit. Um, so yeah, uh, here we go. Just a little sample of the embroidery we did. Um, so reference images are really, really important. Um, and then you want to start sitting out and designing. Not everyone's a good artist. I know I made, I, I can't even draw a stick figure. But I do try to like sketch out to the best of my ability the different parts of my costume. And if I can't draw it, I write it down. I do a breakdown of a list, like, you know, everything from, um, you know, wig, uh, I need my dress, I need my underpinnings, I need my stockings, I need my gloves. I write it all down and I try to get an idea. And also during this part, I start thinking about the cost. Because cosplay can be a really inexpensive hobby, but if, I mean, I, I hate to say, but if you really want to take it to like the higher level, you're going to be putting money into your costumes. Um, Esther, I could have flown myself to Japan <laughs> with what I, I made wow. Esther. Um, but then there's also, but that I mean, but that's just because I wanted to do that. I, I probably, you know, but this costume, I really lucked out, and we have here in Atlanta a lot of really good discount fabric places. I think I spent maybe 45 bucks, wig not included, on my Godoka costume. Um, so I try to, like, when I'm writing, breaking down my costume, I'm trying to get in my head how much things are going to cost. Um, and, then, and then the design part comes. The, how am I going to make this? How am I going to fit this to my body? There's so many options out there in terms of patterning. Um, luckily, things like McCall's and, and Simplicity and Butterick, they have a lot of great patterns, but you know, this doesn't exist. I had to, I had to actually draft this myself. Um, before leftover from fashion school, I have what are called slopers, and they're like basic pattern blocks that you can use to draft further patterns from. Now, I believe Simplicity and Butterick have slopers that you can buy in your size. So they're just gonna be like the, the basic things, but having that basic, uh, like your bodice cut, your pant cut, the dress, princess, you know, and, and where your darts are gonna be, or if you wanna remove darts, it's key to drafting your own patterns. Um, I'll get into drafting a little bit, uh, in a little bit, but I'm, I am gonna talk about commercial patterns and altering patterns. Um, when you're looking for a pattern, the most important thing is what's called the, the style lines, you know? if does your character have princess seams? You know, where's the waist fall? How, how you know, is there gonna be like a puffy sleeve or not? You wanna get a pattern that as close to possible resembles the outfit you're gonna create. And from that, you can easily add, subtract, you know, change things. Um, you know, and keep in mind, like a lot of times, you know, you will, you will see characters that don't necessarily have like, like when Goddess Madoka is drawn, she doesn't have these princess seams, but a top wouldn't fit as well as it does if I didn't make this in four parts. You know, it's almost like a, a bodice. It's fitted to me. Uh, so sometimes you are going to have to add extra things to fit and contour your body. And, and personally, I'd rather have a costume that looks good on me than looks 100% accurate to the artwork. Um, and that's, you know, I think, you know, keep in mind too, like, we all don't have like six foot legs like Sailor Moon does. So when you're looking for <laughs> something like that, right, because I did Sailor Moon last night and I was like, man, I've got a long torso and stumpy legs. How do I, how do I do that? You raise your hemline a little bit and you, and you raise your waistline. You know, my, my skirt sat a little bit higher than it should, but also, and it wasn't, it definitely wasn't like obscene by any means, but it was longer and it elongated my legs. So you can do like little tricks like that to, to bring up the appearance. Um, this particular outfit, I have a, uh, a cage I built. I can't show any further because I'm not wearing stockings because they're at my friend's house who they uh, lock, lock their keys out. So um, yeah, but I actually built a 
metal cage to support this. A typical petticoat wouldn't do that. So, um, and that was all done by hand. Um, but yeah, so anyways, back to patterns. Sorry, I'm really... Oh, I think they're those pieces. Oh, there, here, here's a camera. Thank you, James. That's Frame Shot. He's an awesome photographer. He'll, he'll be photographing all the uh, con stuff. Um, so yeah, so so really, I mean, look for something that resembles, and, and you can and take and add pieces. You know, I I don't think I didn't draft the sleeves myself. I took these from a like a one of those sexy pirate girl costumes. You know, they had the puffy sleeves. Um, this was you know this I kind of just made up as I went along. Um, but I, I I made you know it's a gourd skirt because if you want if you want an added fullness at the bottom. Oh, there was the it was right there in the machine in the back. Well, I know, <laughs> so special. Thank you. Um, I wonder if I have, I don't, I normally, I'm so terrible about taking progress shots, um, but I might, I might actually have some pattern, do I have any pattern even here? Let's see here, nope, uh, nope, that's me for you, not taking progress shots, sorry. Um, and speaking of, back to the like, reference thing, like look at all my Queen Elizabeth stuff. Um, but yeah, but, it, but and, and then, like I said, you yeah, know, but then if you want to draft your own pattern, getting the slopers, and, and there's a lot of really good tutorials online that will teach you because it's it's not an easy skill set. Um, drafting patterns is, a, it's definitely very advanced, but a lot of people actually like it more than sewing. I love it, I hate sewing, but give me a pattern to draft any day. Um, but it's, it's, I guess it's really hard for me to, to explain without having the tools to show you, but the things if you are going to want to like alter or draft your own patterns, make sure to get rulers. Um, the, the two inch wide, uh, they're about 24, 24 inch wide, two inch like height, uh, clear plastic rulers are really great um, for grading or, or like marking things because you can like lay it on the pattern, you can see through it and then you know mark further things. Getting what's called an S curve, it's a, a metal or plastic ruler to help with if you're like you know wanting to do sleeves or necklines. Um, I also like to keep a protractor around if I need to make circles. Uh, those are your really basic one, um, things you're going to need. You can also get uh, pattern drafting paper. It tends to be really expensive if you buy it at the fabric store, so I'll just get like butcher's paper. Uh, I find works really well. Or if you're a SCAD student, you can get the roll of uh, pattern drafting paper for five bucks, and it's like 25 yards, so it's pretty awesome. Um, or if you know SCAD students, I do. I don't know why I'm looking at you. You don't get yeah, SCAD. I, I know. <laughs> I, you're Lindsay for me, right? Okay. All right. Actually, I was going to have a couple other panelists with me, but like I said earlier, uh, my friends locked their keys, or they left their keys in our Sally and were locked out of their house that night, so they're not here at the moment. Um, so, I mean, I would really just recommend if you want to do pattern drafting, just kind of, kind of read up on it. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free. Talking to a room is always intimidating, and I like answering questions, so stop me at any time. Um, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. At least I'm funny. Um, I also I like. Making a wig. Oh yeah, we can we can talk about we can talk a little bit about wig before I get into sewing. Well, actually, no, I'll do wigs in a bit. Let's we'll cover sewing right now because I got I got some wig stuff. So I don't do wigs. And I'm gonna try to get someone who does wigs to come up. Um, so, one of the things I can't stress enough is fabric choice. Um, I, again, you know, this comes into the whole like cost thing. When you're first starting out as a cosplayer, you tend to gravitate towards the cheaper fabrics, which isn't a bad idea because if you're just learning to sew, you don't want to mess up like say twenty, thirty, forty dollar a yard fabric, um, like I did, <laughs> and I've been doing this for ten years. <laughs> um, but fabrics will make or break your costume. Um, I mean, the, obviously your very basic fabrics are going to be your cotton and your satins. And I know there's always this debate online that satin is evil and cosplay shouldn't wear satin. Well, I'm wearing satin. I don't think I look all that bad. Um, I think what, what people say is that there's a, a type of satin called costumer satin. And it, it is extremely cheap and it is extremely shiny. And the problem with that is that it's just, it's just such a, a, a cheaper material that it doesn't really hold up. It doesn't really drape well. Um, it also just, you know, in photos it shines really bad. Um, it just sometimes looks like a, a trash bag in some cases, and it's just 
and unfortunately, it's not the best fabric. And I mean, yes, it's three ninety nine a yard. Well, you can go a couple steps up, and at Joann's, they have what's called their Casa collection. And if you have a coupon or it's on sale, their Casa satin is only four ninety nine. So you know, and it's a much much better fabric. I mean, uh, this this is actually bridal satin that I got at a discount, but it's really similar to their their Casa satin. It's got a nice sheen that without being shiny. I, and when I talk about the drape of a fabric, that's how fabric hangs. When you cut fabric on a straight line, it, it'll kind of hang straight. If you cut it on the, on the bias or at a diagonal, it's gonna like kind of have a little bit more, bit more give. And different, if you cut fabric in different ways, it's gonna drape differently. So, you know, going, then going back to your patterns, if you've ever noticed on your patterns, they have a line that, like an arrow that goes up and down, that's telling you to what, where to cut your fabric on the body, you know, on the, the length, you either cut with the grain of the fabric or against the grain of the fabric or on the bias, which is crisscross. Um, and that will really determine, like if you're, especially if you're doing like a handkerchief skirt, um, you're gonna wanna cut your heaviest points on your angle because they'll, they'll hang more. Um, circle skirts are really hard because they, you'll notice over time, if you have a circle skirt, it's actually gonna start like drooping differently because of, again, where the fabric was cut on the bias. So anytime you do have a circle skirt, I recommend not hanging it, I recommend folding it and putting it in a drawer or in a, in a bin if it's a costume. Um, so, so, you know, you really do want to look about like, and what's your character going to wear? You know, wh who is your character? Is your character um, an elf? You know, does she live in the forest? Uh, she probably wouldn't wear satins if that were the case. She'd wear, you know, really natural fabrics, linens, cottons. So, you know, you don't have to get real suede, but you can get like the foam micro suede. Those are really great fabrics for any sort of like um, historical or fantasy based character. Um, say you're doing something like Borderlands, post-apocalyptic, you know, Lilith is in a bunch of leathers, you know, she'd probably have some really cool synthetic fabrics too, because, you know, this is kind of, kind of in the future. Um, you know, when I, when I worked on, on Esther, uh, that was, that was fun because, you know, I got custom printed uh, brocade fabric, very similar to what they would have had back in the day. Um, so, I mean, really, you know, keep these things in mind, you know, and, and then if you have something cute like, uh, um, Kimari from Penguin Drum, you know, you could easily do this out of so many different fabrics. You could do a satin on this, you could do, you know, I don't know, do a vinyl. Be, you know, you can, you can get a little creative, but I like to keep in mind what would that character wear. Um, and then also, I'm really big into superheroes. I don't know about you guys, but I love wearing bo like bodysuits. And there are so many spandexes in the world. Um, I got some latex too. Um, sp like spandex. <coughs> Spandex is a different fabric in that it is knit and not woven. Most of your fabrics are actually woven on a machine where spandex is knitted on a machine and that's what allows for the stretch. Um, I have three different types of, wow, it's not been really interesting array of spandex. Um, I have a, a sportswear knit, and I'll pass this around. I have um, a, where are you? You are jumbo spandex, so it's a little bit thicker. This is also known as double knit. Um, and then I have just this is a uh, matte milliskin. Uh, milliskin, personally, is my favorite spandex to work with when doing superhero costumes because you can get it matte or shiny, um, and it just stretches really well. It touches the body really nice, and uh, it just it it, it works. You know, that's the other thing too is a lot of spandexes if they don't have any cotton, it's all lycra. Uh, they get a little sweaty. So nice fabric. I do play with my fabrics all the time. And then I'm gonna and then um, over here I've got an example of micro suede. Um, the Casa satin from Joann's, um, some faux marine vinyl, which is great, and latex, which you don't sew, but glue. And if you're allergic to latex, please don't touch that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, well, you know, I'll, I'll take a moment here if you're taking notes. If you live in the Atlanta area, I'm going to give you the hookups. These are the awesome, like the best places to go find fabric and at discount. There's a place called Fabric World. It's over kind of in the um, Stone Mountain area. If you take 75 and get off at West Park Place Parkway, it's in that general vicinity. It's like right next to a men's warehouse. Uh, there's also a great place. I haven't been there yet, but some of my friends have gone. It's off of Jimmy Carter, kind of where Netherworld Haunted House. There's a discount fabric place over there that I've heard of great things. Uh, Gail Kay is over in Ch off of Cheshire Bridge. You'll, you're going to find more higher end specialty <laughs> fabrics there. But it's, if you have a costume that you know maybe requires something you're not going to find at a regular like Joann's or Hancock, I really recommend Gail Kay. Sadly, they never have sales, or you know sometimes they're kind of mean going there. Um, <laughs> 
And then um, it's a little place, and it's actually where I got the fabric for Gadoka. It's called Atlanta Fabrics, and that's off of Buford Highway. Uh, kind of a little bit like near where Nurture Hills and Buford Highway are. Yeah, they have like really, sometimes you'll get spandex there for $6 a yard. I got this bridal satin for $5 a yard. Uh, so it's, it's a really good place. And then if you're hunting online, fabric.com, uh, fabric fabricdepot.com, and then for spandex, I always, always, always tell people go to Spandex World or Spandex House. Um, really great places. So. All right. My pictures. Why am I showing you? Where's my costume? Heather, I can't figure out my laptop without a mouse. All right. What do we got? Like, um, from uh, Archer. No, you can't really tell. I'm actually wearing PVC. I did a knit in the PVC. I know, it's in my friend. It was AWA. Um, what if we dim the lights a little? Do you think we that out? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me anything. Here we go. Um, this is Lady Sif from Thor. I'm actually remaking this costume. Um, but I got, I got this. Oh, thank you. There. Can you see better now? Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's a, a faux fur that I actually luckily found in New York City. Um, I actually created her waist piece out of leather. I had stra uh, like scraps of leather that I um, glued. I used uh, E6000 to glue it. Um, the gauntlets are made out of real leather and uh, bolted and bound. Uh, leather is another material I love working with. And I actually did a spandex bodysuit, but I'm, I don't really like it, so I'm remaking it. Um, I'm going to do a scale male top and micro suede pants um, as opposed to uh, doing the full bodysuit. Um, and also when you do superheroes, you don't have to do all um, spandex. That's my Scarlet Witch uh, with a PVC one piece corset. Um, and then I used again a micro suede on the cape because it, it I didn't want the shine. I wanted the light to like suck in and, and suede does really well with that. I have a question. Yeah. When you say PVC, mm -hmm. all I can think of is the pipe. So, <laughs> so sorry, yeah. explain that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, PVC, uh, fashion vinyl, uh, it's it's a it's a type of Material. I wouldn't really call it fabric because it's it's not woven or knitted. It's just a it's it's a plastic, um, and you can get it in a two-way stretch or a four-way stretch or a not stretch at all. You tend to see it in a lot of like goth wear. Um, you know, you see like the black like the, the PVC dresses. Some people will confuse latex with PVC, but it, that's actually not it. Um, it's it's a really diverse material, but it's really finicky. And if you're going to sew PVC, um, you're going to want to get you can get like a specialty foot, a Teflon foot. It's actually a plastic foot that will like, you can top stitch because otherwise the PVC gets really uh, under the metal. It kind of will bunch. Also, I like to use um, that? the parchment paper. You can lay parchment paper if you're top stitching PVC and it'll just tear away from the thread. It's a really awesome technique, especially if you have any sort of sticky fabric. Um, it works really well. Um, with my Lilu costume, I actually molded these out of flat or um, like silicone. The suspenders uh, are actually cast silicone, so it's not just about sewing. Is it? Here we go. Since I keep referencing it, there's my my beast. Yeah, and actually, surprisingly, I moved, I was able to move on stage for two and a half minutes and not fall apart. Um, that's it. There we go. All right. So, is that crown part of the actual costume itself, or is it actually sitting on the head? It is. It's it's sewn into my wig. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's it's actually a candle holder that I I uh, ca we cast and put the fleur de lis and the iron crosses on, and then I use paper clay, not paper mache. Paper clay is an air dry clay that you can get at Michaels or Hobby Lobby or Joanne's to form on top, and then I just blend it out. That's all this girl has. And that was my partner. She did an amazing job. Um, gosh. Oh, I feel like I can talk about everything. Um, questions on fabric. Where do you uh, get your leather? Oh, I go to Tandy Leather. It's um, They have one here in Atlanta. Um, they're, it's off of in Tucker. Um, but I, that's where I get my, my hard leather. As far as fashion sewing leather, there's a couple leather houses online that I go to. <sighs> I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, and leather's, leather's pricey. I mean, you're looking at like $40 to $100 for a, a piece. Um, but it's, it's a fun and really, really fun material. Actually, I got, I did get some fashion leather at Tandy, and then my 
friend Anthony Caney did a costume for me. Oh, that's UDK's photos. Those are, I didn't like those. They were unedited. Where's my, where's my, where's my Daryl one? Where's the links? Yeah, that maybe it is under, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this, this is a, an outfit done with, uh, oh, where'd you go? With leather. Um, Anthony is an amazing designer. Yes, that's a real lynx. I, I shot with it. He did not eat me. Um, <laughs> and that's a, that's a uh, African circle. So my friend kept calling in us a lot. Um, yeah, and then and then the boots. Uh, oh, oh, oh God, do you guys want the best thing to paint shoes and boots with? Yes. Yes. Some people want to spray paint. Spray paint. You don't want to do that. There are two amazing products that you can get sometimes in town, but most of the time online. For a spray thing, if you have a non-patent shoe, if you have patent leather, you're, you're kind of screwed. It's hard. Though. I mean, you can sand it all you want and spray it, but it's really, really hard. Um, but there's a, a product called New Life, N-U-L-I-F-E. It comes in a spray can. They have about 13 to 20 different colors, um, and you can actually spray onto a shoe. Uh, I, pr I, my friends use that. I prefer a product called Angelus Leather Paint. You know, like it sounds like Angel. You know, Buffy and Angel, Angel, Angelus. It's um, an amazing, amazing product. I think they have like 50 colors and they just released a neon and a metallic line. And you can get it in little bottles and you brush it on, or if you have an airbrush, you can airbrush it on. Every, every shoe I ever do, I paint with that. Um, uh, what kind of um, uh, product do you recommend for like spray painting rubber shoes, like uh, coloring rubber shoes? Like, like the shiny ones? Yeah. It's unfortunately, it's just really hard because of the material. It doesn't want to stick to anything. Um, I've known some people to have um, some luck with the Angelus leather paint because you paint it on. Um, you know, I actually had a friend who, who used floral paint on a pair of uh, like white vinyl boots, and it's it's cracking in the seams, but it held up for a quick. If you if you're gonna wear it for like one con, I would recommend the floral paint that you can get at um, Michaels. Uh, also, um, in a quick fix, if it's if it's like a real leather. Um, or, or close enough if you don't have a lot of cracks. I like to use, for the Emma boots, I actually painted them with Jacquard, has um, in, a screen printing ink, and it's thin enough that you can put on like a couple layers and it won't crack. I actually used the Jacquard <coughs> screen printing inks um, on real leather when I did my uh, Umi Ryuzaki costume from uh, Magic Knight Rare. Here we go. Um, that's all, that's actually EVA foam that, oh, um, and resin gems, and there's my, my friend is food. But yeah, our corsets are leather, and all of our armor is um, EVA foam. It's interlocking floor mats is the best way you can get them. You can go to any, like, I, uh, most, Harbor like, Freight. yeah, Harbor Freight. I love Harbor Freight. But like, I hope people will sometimes carry them, and then they sometimes look at you like you're crazy. Um, but you can get like a pack of five of them for, for 20. Um, Walmart has them, but we've actually noticed the ones that they sell at Walmart are a lower grade, and they didn't work as well. I, I don't know, it's just, it was weird. We were, my friend did a fem, female shepherd from Mass Effect Armor and it just did not mold as well as our stuff. So we, we don't know what happened there. Um, but it's a great material. You can get a heat gun for 20 bucks. And you can heat form this stuff. Um, if you actually see, there's a really awesome female shepherd walking around this weekend. She did port fits, thank you. I'm just not in costume. Oh, that's it, hey Leah. <laughs> there's this really awesome female shepherd that will be in costume later. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't even I yeah, it's really <laughs> hot in here. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize. Well, it's good. I'm glad I was about ready to say something nasty. <laughs> I was just gonna be like, so there's this awesome girl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk and walk to get some water. Um, thank you. Um, <sighs> questions? Yes. What do you know about like? Uh, I've seen these people, like especially in Japan, the ones that go all out on like making mech outfits. What do you know about, like I've seen like certain kind of bums or something on some websites they you, you need to You need to find me that person so they can be my friend. Actually, I can't, <laughs> yeah, but you, a lot of that stuff, thank you so much, James. Um, uh, there's a lot of, if you wanna get into the hard plastics and the hard stuff, um, you know, there's a lot of that's gonna be like vacuum formed or cast, um, you know, there's several ways to go about it. I think with the larger mechs, I've seen some people use like the spray foam, the insulation foam and they carve it, but I don't think you can get like a smooth surface. I mean, a lot of that bigger stuff is really going to be like made with a made with like a, a process of pouring plastic or heat forming plastic over things. Do you, Leah? Do you know anything about that? About like pulling plastic? Yeah, or like just hard plastic making. Every time I've asked any of the pop makers, it's always vacuum form or yeah. clay sculpt. And and, and yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. I remember when AWA there was like this group of people that made this made all these uh, uh, armor outfits and they made oh, them all the out apple of group? And what they did is apparently they found some website that told them how to uh, melt uh, plastic in their oven or something and they folded it that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Centro, yeah. Okay, well, why am I saying I don't know anything about Centro and I make Centro masks? Oh, but she's I mean, right. I don't want to put no. plastic in my oven and, well, but and then my it's, entire house is yeah, I mean, it's, plastic or something. I, I, I've never done the Centro in the oven. I, I use a heat gun, but I only use that for small things. Like for my, my Scarlet Witch mask, uh, I'm a blanket on Centro. Uh, it was a rough night last night. We're up late. Um, no, you can't really see it in there. Dirt. So yeah, this mask right here, that's that's plastic. Well, technically not plastic. Centra is um, foam, and it's, it's injectable foam. It's actually a really, really coarse PVC foam. Um, and there's two, there's a dealer here in town that you can get um, eight foot by four foot sheets, and the place is called CalSAC, C-A-L-S-A-K, plastics. And they come in different thicknesses. There's a giant sheet of it sitting in my hallway. C-A-L-S-A-K, CalSAC plastics. It's over in Duluth, um, kind of if you take 85 to Pleasant Hill, um, it's kind of back uh, on the opposite of, of the highway of the mall, it's in that general area. Um, and a, and a, one of those eight foot sheets cost me about 35 bucks. What's the plastic or whatever? Sintra, S-I-N-T-R-A. Um, and it's, it's great, you can sand it down and paint it. Um, real quick too, if you're ever, if you are painting plastic, it's really important to sand. Um, yeah. I, can't, I can't stress that enough that you know, anytime you want to paint something, that you get a get a really like with medium grade, you know, medium grade sandpaper, and put a light light sanding on it because it'll help the paint stick. Because um, we took we took some liberties yesterday. We were trying to finish some sailor moon props, and we just spray painted without sanding, and it really, I mean, it it, it shows. Um, this was obviously sanded down multiple times. Um, I actually didn't make the mask. I, uh, someone else said you did, but I'm I've gotten into making masks lately. It's, I ended up making seven of them for various Dragon Con costumes for people. Oh, look, here's some photos by Heather Alexander. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's that girl. Um, yeah. Um, and then behind, you had a question? Oh, there's the answer. Oh, cool. There's a silly little video. I like to set things on fire, specifically my costumes. <laughs> And I got to do that with this costume. Oh, the show does talk. See that? Yep. Yeah, it's fun. Um, certain synthetic materials burn really interesting. Um, that's why, like, with satin or, like, anytime you're working with, like, an organza, like, you know, the, like, flowy fabric, it's really hard to sew sometimes. You can't always get a nice seam. So I just take a lighter to it and just melt the edges, and it, it, it works just as well as, say, using, like, a fabric. Spray check, um, and then like like that's how I was able to get this without having to top stitch it. I got a quick question. It's like I'm a little professional when it comes to this stuff because I haven't had luck with a sewing machine. Oh. I pretty much hand stitch everything I uh -huh. do. Do you have any yeah. uh, suggestions? Because every time I've used the sewing machine, even if I follow the instructions exactly, the thing eats the cloth. Well, that that's actually probably an issue with your your bottom bobbin. Um, there's probably either it's not wound right or there might be an issue down there. Whenever it wants to like, if it's kind of getting jumped up in the bottom with lots of thread in the bottom, is that the issue you're having? Mm -hmm. That's gonna be, that's something with your bob bobbin inside the machine. It's either not wound correctly or it's not going through the looper correctly. It might be user error or it might be something you need to get fixed. Um, because that's- that, Like I said, because of that, I tend to hand stitch yeah. everything I make. Um, Though for 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 so yeah, I would I would have someone look at that because that's that's my friend's machine started doing that and she's, you know, obviously really she's a fashion student and it, it ended up being like a fifteen dollar replacement piece. So um, though if you are going to get into a lot of sewing in different fabrics, I recommend picking up this book. It's uh, more fabric savvy and what it is is it's like a hundred different fabrics. It talks about their like properties and then it tells you. How to like work with the material? Do you need to? Is it does it come pre shrink? Should you wash it? Can you wash it in different? You know, like uh, hot or cold. It talks the best way to mark it. You know, sometimes you can mark things with chalk. Sometimes you can use wax. It also talks about what type of interfacing. There's 
because you can't use the same type of interfacing on every fabric. Sometimes it'll melt. Oh, Heather, can you uh, grab that for me? Oh, that's fine. Oh, I think they want to look. All right. Um, it talks about the type of thread to use. There's polyester thread. There's cotton thread. There's heavy duty thread. It talks what size needles. That's really, really important when you're sewing fabric. Be aware of what needle you're using. You have to use a leather needle on leather or marine vinyl. If you're um, sewing knits, get a, a needle for knit. You know, it's a, the the size of the head of that needle is going to make a huge difference on how well it sews your fabric. Um, and also, you know, and it gives little things like you know how uh, best way to press it on what setting on your iron. This book has basically become my bible for every time I work with the fabric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are there any fabrics that give like um, kind of give off the um, um, uh, that the appearance of another material? Like, is there anything that kind of looks like metal or um, just anything that, like from the start? Just yeah, well, they, they do make metallic spandex fabrics that if you don't want it to be stretchy, you can interface it. Um, the problem, the only problem with the metallic spandex is that over time it tends to wear off. But um, let's see here. It's not a drag. Where are you? Where are you, Phoenix? Here we go. Like that. That's a, an example of the metallic spandex. Um, I want to remake that costume. It's old. I've worn it too many times. Um, yeah. Um, is that all about hand sewing? Do you have any interesting hand sewing techniques? Because that's all I do. I really, I you. really suck at hand sewing. So my extent of hand sewing is that little like over under stitch. Oh. <laughs> I go over under over under. It's I guess a whip stitch. I'm really I. I never hand sew, um, unless, I mean, the only time I do hand sew is when, um, oh no, boom, um, I, I like to, I've, I've become a, a stickler for finishing the insides of my costumes, and so the old times, like, if I'm doing, like, a, a hem, like, on a waist, or, like, I mean, a, a hem, like, uh, not on this one, I didn't mind, but I'll, like, I will hand sew that down, because I don't like having that extra stitching lines, but unfortunately, no, I, I have no, no advice on hand sewing, because I, I don't, I try to avoid it. <laughs> I tend to make my roommate be like, Megan, you hand sew this. Lots of patience. Uh, yeah, lots of patience. If, I, if anyone has a hand sewing technique they'd like to share, though. Eh. I mostly oh, just the use the back stitch. The back stitch and everything is your best friend. Can you explain? Do you know what that is? <coughs> I don't know my name. Oh, can you, can you explain back it for us? Pretty much, you know, you, you know you, you'll go, um, you know, when you first run it down and everything, the knot's going to be, you know, right there. Then when it comes up and everything, you're going to loop it back bring it down and under and bring it up through and everything and you'll just keep repeating that kind of emotion. It gives the loop, if you do it correctly, it will look like the machine does. It, 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 it's what was designed to, you know, it's pretty much what the machines were designed to mimic was that. It's used on a lot of seam work and everything, but a lot of people use it because it is a good, strong stitch. Your running stitch, which a lot of people just use it pretty much up, up, down, up, down, it, that's not strong. It, Good for holding stuff for a little while, but the, the running stitch will fail you nearly every time. I learned something. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, really random, too. By the way, this black that you can't really see because of the lighting, that's actually what the metallic black spandex looks like. You know, I just showed you the gold. The metallic black actually doesn't look very black. Um, my friend is. <laughs> <laughs> we're awesome. We are, we're, we're classy ladies, okay? We're classy ladies. Um, Um, <coughs> I guess we can talk about wigs for a little bit, talk about makeup, go back to sewing, answer questions. So uh, on to wigs, um, I'm so glad to be a cosplayer in this day and age, because 10 years ago, finding wigs was really difficult. And nowadays we have like Arda and the magical realm of Taobao. Taobao is, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it other than it's the Chinese shopping mall. It's like eBay. If, if, but, but, yeah, but, you know, really big, mm -hmm. but I get uh, so many wigs like this one on Taobao for fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. T A O B A O. It's but you need to use like a shopping service. I think I should make a little list here. Let's start a little little notepad. Um, how? I wonder if I can make this bigger. Yeah. Thanks. Font. Huge. <laughs> And then I use a 
shopping site called Yoi Bai. Because you have it because it's it's Chinese, you have to go through like a shopping service. Um, I tend to only if I'm doing large orders or group orders, is the only time I'll use Taobao because obviously shipping can get really expensive shipping from China. Um, and then of course there's like service fees and stuff. Um, but it is <coughs> an amazing thing. And you can even go on Yoi Bai. They have a translator now that you can like type in say like wig mm -hmm. or if, or there's a lot of sites. If you just Google like Taobao cosplay lists people will link to specific shops. Like it's different vendors will sell on this one site. Um, you know, what, some of my favorite wig shops are a company called um, CC Kids, which is where I got my, my um, Gadoka wig from. Um, and they, they just have, I mean, everything. Um, and a lot of their wigs are actually heat resistant, meaning that up to a certain temperature, you can actually use like your hot, like your flat iron or your curling iron to style them. Um, unfortunately though, I found most wigs, I don't really get a lot of luck with curling irons. I still use a, a hot water method or a steam method. Um, I always have a pair of hot rollers or I have foam rollers uh, to help create like curls and bangs. Um, I wish I had some, some shots of the Sailor Moon stuff we did because those, those bangs are really awesome. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want to like say, st like straighten a wig, one of the best ways, if you have a wavy wig, you want to straighten it flat, uh, put on a wig fit head, put it in your bathtub. If it's a longer wig, put it on like a pole in your bathtub and get water to just above boiling. Right when it starts to boil, pour that water over that wig. It will go completely straight on you. Um, alternately, you can do that to create curls in wigs. If you have a, um, like a clothing steamer. Yeah, oh yeah, that works great. Or uh, your if you have an iron that has an upright steaming function. But yeah, you can, uh, you can definitely, I've, I've, you know, I've met that with mixed results, but I think it depends again on the fiber of the wig. Um, I, um, and then I, I prefer, if I'm gonna cut wigs, I'm gonna get a straight razor. I don't like using scissors. I find the straight razor gives you more control for, and it makes it look more natural if you wanna layer. The, this wig, the bangs were like probably down to my, my chin. And um, my friend, I actually don't do a lot of wig work. I have a, a friend who does it for me. She used the straight razor to, to create the look. Um, I'm actually really fortunate now. Another thing too with cosplaying is find other friends to cosplay with because not every one person can do it all. Um, my strengths obviously lie in pattern drafting and sewing. Uh, we have a friend who she was like, I don't, I can't do anything. I suck. I this is this. I do, I do nothing. And then we find out she's like this wig master, you know. And then we have a, another friend who's a sculpture student at SCAD, and she like sculpted all of our Sailor Moon brooches. So it's it's been actually this is our first weekend all cosplaying together, and we all work together, and it was so much more enjoyable, like you know, hanging out and, and getting to to do all this together. So um, cosplaying with friends is definitely a bonus. Any more questions? Yes? Do you have any tips for making wefts? Because every time I've tried to do that... Well, oh, wefts? <sighs> buy, buy the Monarda. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a weft is a, um, like, or do you, you mean like making the weft, sewing them in and putting them on the track? Yeah. Um, you can buy loose hair or cut hair from a wig. Um, if you're going, to, like, honestly, are you, gonna cut, are you buying it loose or are you cutting from a previous wig? Um, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, because if, if, one of the best ways is, is if, if it's already in a wig, just kind of cut from the wig itself, and a lot of times when you buy the wefts, it already comes pre-glued or tacked down, um, and I suggest hand sewing. Some people prefer gluing. I think hand sewing, just, it, it lays better. The glue sometimes get, gets really tacky. Um, it, what other method besides wefts do you um, on, like really for the hairline, the, your best way you're going to want to do is, is weft it in or fold the, you know, cut it into the shape and fold it and glue it under. Um, it's really the only, the best ways. And, and, you know, hairspray and, and got to be has this like get glued product is, is awesome. If you have like big, crazy hair, um, we've all, I mean, we've experimented with like watered down, uh, Elmer's glue, but it doesn't dry right. I really like that got to be stuff. Also, if you have a longer wig and you want to keep it from detangling, there's this um, stuff, it's called like olive sheen, um, and you can buy it in the, uh, I guess uh, for all, it's the ethnic hair select section. Um, and it's, it's made for, you know, hair and, and I, I like it better than say like the synthetic hairspray for wigs. It just helps keep it like nice and detangled and it's like four bucks a bottle. No, you didn't have a question. You're just asking that. How do you untangle your wigs if they get knotted? I always start from the bottom. Always start brushing from the bottom. Um, you know, and I like to have a wig brush. Always carry a brush if you're wearing a wig. I don't know, I always carry a brush in general. I have, I have this sucker. I like the, the metal 
brushes with little prongs, and uh, the key to um, untangling any wig is just get out of there. You want to just start from the bottom and work it, work it, work your way up into it. I feel like it's comfortable <coughs> for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever uh, wash your wig? I do. Um, I, I like, there's this stuff that you can get at Sally's Beauty. It's the Revlon. It's uh, 7 dollars It's a wig shampoo. Um, I find that's my favorite. Um, Rev Revlon makes it, uh, wig shampoo, and it's six ninety nine dollars or seven ninety nine dollars for the bottle. Um, and it, it works really well. It's a wig shampoo and conditioner. Um, and like I said, I prefer that. I've, ever since I started using that olive oil stuff, I've been uh, enjoying that more. Can you get that shampoo at any hair salon? Um, no, it's a, you, have, you can only get it at either wig shops or um, uh, Sally's. We have this funny story. I had a dry queen tell me one time that the best way to wash their wigs was with Murphy's oil soap. Dude! A couple times a year. Really? Yeah. Murphy oil? Okay, Mur May then Murphy oil soap. I always trust dry queens. They know more <laughs> about this than we do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My, uh, my friend who made my, um, my Emma Frost corset, he's actually, he, he primarily makes costumes for dry queens. 